Hello everyone, thank you for coming back from the break. Not many of us, but it's not so overly happy topic actually, and the numbers, yeah. charts and numbers, and spreadsheets and data. I'm just sit down. <laughs> Okay, hello. Uh, just to start in. Uh, my name is Michal Wojcicki. I come from Wikimedia Poland. I'm sorry that I cannot walk, but I have this microphone over here, so I can do something like that. Most. And uh, I was, I am, I am, because it still exists. I am a representative to the thing called WCA. A lot of hatred or a lot of love has put in this association. Um, my goal is to prepare something about numbers, about chapters. I mean to give you a slight bit of quantitative data and much more of information how hard it is obtained, to obtain and how important it is. I, I don't know, do you have any do you have any experiences or professional experience with reporting or data analysis or such a thing? Okay. One person, second person, maybe third, no one saw. Okay, let's go with that. So, first, chapters. Chapters are a little bit an unsung hero of the Wikimedia movement. I mean, they are a very important part of the ecosystem because on the one hand we have the big centralized community foundation, on the other part we have the big millions of scattered Wikimedia users all over the globe, and then we have something in between. We have an intermediary, we have an organization, we have a number of organizations which are which are put in many different countries, and probably now they will be put in many different topical areas to help particular people. Now, firstly, the raison d'etre to use the uh, organizations is that Wikimedia Foundation cannot do cope with everything. They don't want to do it. It's very hard to do it from San Francisco to cope with something in Turkmenistan or even in Poland. So they want us to establish those local user organizations. Second thing is that the local user people are very different and very distant from Wikimedia Foundation. I don't know if there's anyone from Wikimedia Foundation here. All right. Thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, because I think that Wikimedia Foundation, some people don't really realize how distant they are from the average Wikimedia user. I mean, they have some, uh, some proximity to English Wikipedia and many other many different English projects user. But for uh, in my opinion, for an average <coughs> Wikimedia user in some language, Polish, Turkish, Serbian, whatever, Wikimedia Foundation is a very distant entity. And actually it was proven in the research that was shown here like two hours ago. Uh, there was a survey, uh, that people were asked uh, what uh, Wikimedia Foundation does to you and how good it is. And actually the people were so selfish about that especially people from other languages and English. So actually the people in the organization in organizations in different <coughs> countries, they are to step up, they are to be built ground up from the local people and they are to cope with, uh, with those local people to give them resources, to give them brands, to give them some encouragement, to give them identity, to connect them with Wikimedia Foundation people and to act as some kind of a legal and real life art to talk with real institutions, to talk with the plan, governments and everything, to be this art. One problem is that uh, chapters are not the very last child. I think uh, from, from the year to next year um, they, give, they get more and more recognition during Wikimedia and places like that but still they are not really heavily described in the success stories. Success stories are very often about the community foundation or about particular users and projects, but uh, those organizations in between are not so heavily invested into. So, we need some data. We need some data about actual chapters. 
in order to draw the full picture. Firstly, I think as a chapter person, I'd like, love to promote the activity to gather more support and movement to, to the chapters. I think there's a really lot of some press kits and a little bit buzz in academia and press uh, to, show, uh, to show us as a movement. <coughs> However, there's much more important thing. I don't know if you follow some, some email lists. There was a lot of talk about peer reviews, about auditing, about growing nature, about more and more control and uh, learnings from the chapters and about program evaluation. And th this was more or less the direction that the Wikimedia Foundation would like to follow. And this is more or less the direction that actually maturing organizations should follow. Chapters now have bigger and bigger budgets. They became actually quite um, established organizations with a, with a pretty, pretty, pretty big size foundations in some countries. So nowadays we need more established and more major governments. Now running things from the one desk one by one person, not audited, audited by anyone, just uh, believing on the good deal, maybe, maybe not enough when we are talking about millions of euros or dollars. So far, however, we didn't have this, should I talk faster, slower? Ah, but so far we didn't have this actual analysis. We had a lot of qualitative data, so-called success stories. There were those cool project stories. There was a lot of talking about how you do that. There was this uh, chapters ex uh, exchange uh, initiative, which is very, very worthy for me. But we didn't gather actual numbers. And why we didn't do that? Most, the biggest reason is because it's very, very difficult. It's very difficult to gather. Very few people actually even, even responded or tried to respond to the survey which was given to him and her just because it was very difficult to respond. <coughs> it's very easy to write two, three, four sentences about the project where you are in love with, about the project that you are running, about uh, the teachings that you gave, about the expeditions that you made. It's very difficult to actually dig into the data and three how much money you spent in your office and how much money you spent on your stuff. However, if you want to do this peer review, and if you want to do some peer review to know if I am actually spending too much on, on my staff, comparing to my size or the office or my programs, and I am spending too little, then you need to actually dig into this data and you need to, you need to read it, and then you need to read some data from other organizations like you and compare. It's impossible to, to judge it otherwise. Then these data are very difficult to analyze. You need to have some other data, you need to know how to work with numbers, it's much more difficult than I don't know, reading and yet another success story. Sometimes you would need to run statistical analysis or just make a spreadsheet. For many people, spreadsheets are pretty scary. And this is very difficult to use. And why is that so difficult to use? Firstly, because it's very difficult to have any reasonable data, quantitative data. It's very easy to find some metric and some number and put it into the spreadsheet. However, it's very difficult to have some meaningful number and some meaningful data to put into the spreadsheet. If you want to cross-compare anything and to run some pre-peer review, then we need to have some I don't know, standardized or unified global metrics. These metrics need to have some agreed um, description standing behind them and they need to be followed. I know this is the Wikimedia movement and no, no one, really no one loves filling up forms and scratches. This is not what we wanted to do and this is really not fun, maybe for some very certain people. And, and this is something that we would like to avoid. However, if the movement wants to grow. If we want to grow in financial aspects and if we want to grow in organizational aspects, if we want to hit those millions and tens of millions of euros per year, then unfortunately, unfortunately, we need to start behaving as some major organizations. 
this means that the movement sooner or later will need to start discussing these things. Some kind of standardized financial report will need to be produced, maybe by FDC people, maybe by GAC people, maybe by chapters themselves, and it will need to be delivered on a constant basis. It would be good if those metrics were more prepared with local people on the review with the chapters, and if they, if they would reflect some local specifics and local situations. So we will not end up with some meaningless uh, structures, meaningless reports, and we will need to do the same thing in the next year and in the next year. To do, to do that, and to gather this data, some proper tools will need to be found. And do, even during this um, my survey, there was a lot of talk with, about that. I don't know what would be the most convenient tools for the chapters. Should it be Wikicode? Should it be Google Spreadsheet? <coughs> um, should it be some other automated tool? There should be some put some priorities in some research and probably some standardized reports after that put and implemented. The very important thing is implementation. And I don't know, just now a brief pause for you. I don't know if you have any, any ideas about them, Mr. Chapter's people. And some of you may be in touch or seen the survey or have any thoughts about FDC and reporting and about annual reporting for FDCs. Anyone? All right. Yes, I did see the survey. Um, had my thoughts on saying, and I must admit, I'm not one of the people that filled it out. Uh, I guess my thoughts, you know, is there's, there's a lot of questions, so you're requesting a lot of data, and uh, particularly, for an example, um, there's a lot of information requested on membership counts, um, and I think, and I'd like to see you sort of saying, yes, is, um, you know, there needs to be global standardisation, but as a chapter, we, we, we don't prioritise member count because we're there to promote the mission of the Wikimedia movement, we're not there to gain members. Uh, so we don't really concentrate on that. Whereas compared to an organisation such as Wikimedia Poland, which I know has many members and, and is a sort of large, uh, broad base in terms of membership count. So you, know, you do that comparison, we end up looking very small, you end up looking very big. Um, but because they're different priorities, uh, you may get some sort of invalid comparison just by looking at those numbers without understanding the context of you know, the decisions that each group has made and how they reflect themselves in those numbers. And what's your chapter? Uh, Wikimedia Australia. Australia, alright, thanks. Anyone else? Uh, actually, this shows something, <coughs> and it proves something very, very similar that WCA proved and what has said on the pre conference lately. That unfortunately, we like it or not, uh, only the biggest chapters so far can have any resources to put into some extras. Like not running the the only program that you can afford to run because you have too many little volunteers and you don't have any staff. You can only only the biggest the biggest and I mean really the biggest chapters can even think about hiring someone or having someone to put on some proper automatic semi automatic reporting. Um, on the other hand, only the biggest chapters will ask for the biggest money. So probably only the biggest chapters are the big risk for the movement. I suppose what I'm saying is not that Poland is a large chapter and Australia is a small chapter. I mean, Australia still has a very large volunteer pool, uh -huh. a very large Australian community, but um, you know, there's uh, which we still engage with. Um, but we don't feel the need to go, you know, to sign them up and get them to pay their twenty dollars a year. Uh, so yeah, we still got, got a large volunteer base to draw upon, uh, which is comparable. We just don't have the members. Uh, so you know, when you start comparing these numbers, uh, you miss those, you miss mm -hmm. those things which are giving you a context and you know, true story. The numbers on themselves are very misleading uh, story potentially. Oh, there might be the be the second thing, like how many chapters actually feel that they need some health checks or be peer reviewed or they need any audit, or that they need some uh, improved governance. This is the, the very big topic that we, uh, we assume uh, everyone was talking while establishing WCA, and I'm here because it was, it was a semi-WCA session, that we want to go further 
and probably some progress and improvements with the government, governance, structures, and everything, so and so on, will be needed and implemented. <coughs> but unfortunately, probably the vast majority of the movement uh, does not want to go there because they are not in this position. They are just not in this size. They, their volunteer base is in a completely, completely different shape and they just want to act as it is. So maybe this is one of the biggest learnings of this, uh, of this, I don't know, of this quest for the glorified chapter with audited, uh, audited board and audited financials and all those improvements that we've been talking in Milan during one year of WCA. However, I think that FDC and when FDC will be uh, working further, they will not let the smaller, the smaller chapters to, to uh, like I mean bigger chapters to live without some improvements in their reporting. I think that there will be some two-tier or maybe three-tier situation that we will have some reporting for the smaller ones, some reporting for the bigger ones, and the bigger ones will they will need to. Father. One of my examples was uh, once again taken from the email lists. But we were talking about peer reviews and WCA people and chapters, some chapters people were involved in that. We were talking about benchmarks and uh, checking, for instance, if our administrative costs are high or low and how we should compare it. And then all of a sudden, actually, the big, quite a discussion occurred that actually how we calculate administrative costs. And if we really separate them from program costs and other costs that our organizations have, and actually that was what turned out, that the uh, vast majority of chapters does not have the very, very detailed accounting. So they simply cannot um, separate strictly administrative costs from program costs. So it's very hard to speak about effectiveness and the efficiency of particular chapters. For instance, in Wikimedia Poland, uh, many program costs are addressed, smaller ones, are addressed as some office costs, like sending some mails, real mails, paper mails to institutions, things like that. All of the, all of the smaller items, they are addressed as office costs. Why? Uh, because it's far, far simpler because then you don't need to make yet another call to, from the board to address, I don't know, $30 to a particular project. You, need to, you don't need to recreate some budget all the time. You, you need to, we talk about small money, but still the small money can be, uh, because we're medium size, so actually our accounting is pretty good. So, but in, in smaller organizations, it can be even worse. So, uh, in big organizations, you have something like centers of costs that you try to address every single dollar to a particular person, program. Of course, some, sometimes it's fakey, but, but you are still trying to do that just to know and just to have the support manager with our company. But in small organization, actually, this is very difficult to know. They have the qualitative data. They know more or less how much they spend. But after that, putting it into one report, showing it, outside, showing it to the foundation, showing it to other chapters, and showing it to other people after five years, it will be very, very difficult. Because it's qualitative and it's not quantitative. Because you would need to put a lot of your thoughts to have it in a quantitative way. That's a problem. And actually there was this, that was a perfect, actually perfect response from Wikimedia Australia. I don't know, really, if, this auditing is worth it, really. When we are talking about small money and if we, want, if we want to just kill our volunteers or take them simply from doing something tangible to doing reporting about reporting, so is it really worth it, right? So probably here some more, more tier than one solution will need to be coined. Some kind of a threshold. <coughs> the chapters will be eligible, 
and they will be required to do some better reporting, to go through some peer reviews, things like that, uh, a more, more proper run. And <coughs> All right, if you are tired, just, just a couple of examples, what can you do, uh, can, what you can do with the data. These are the, the simplest uh, examples actually I could do, because it proves to be very, very difficult to write any meaningful summaries from the data that we have in the Wikimedia movement. Even if we have some financial statements that are published, even when we have annual reports that are, that are published, <coughs> unfortunately, they are not standardized, and what is more, more many of them are lacking very substantial data. We have a lot of funny pictures, a lot of stories, but we don't have even sometimes, sometimes basic data like how much we earned and how much we spent in a 15, 15 pages booklet made by a very major chapter. So, first thing, <coughs> this is the growth. A rate of growth of week, uh, chapters and uh, particular Wikipedia's. The green, uh, the green line is uh, a number of chapters, and yeah, of course um, we have the cut uh, things about. And the rest are the blue. This is these are the numbers of so 50,000 plus uh, articles Wikipedia's. Uh, red one is 100,000 plus uh, language Wikipedia's, and we have uh, some other benchmarks like. Uh, thousands of very active Wikipedians and millions of uh, articles total. Just to see that. So we can see that more, uh, more or less the number of uh, chapters that are, exist uh, that are existing is following the numbers of 50,000 language, uh, 100,000 language Wiki uh, articles Wikipedians. More or less. Something like that we can see that this number is completely not correlated with thousands of very active Wikipedians, at least on the global scale. Maybe the distribution, and probably the distribution of, of Wikipedians in the global scale is very, is very changing, and it is. We know that it is. We have, we, we have them spreading, like they were concentrated in particular countries, but now in 2012 they are more deconcentrated in very different areas. But if we take a look on the global, on the global situation, we see that the numbers of chapters is growing, the budgets, of, the budgets are growing, but the very active Wikipedians are more stable. Some correlation is between 100,000 language Wikipedias and the numbers of chapters. So we could have some hint that there is some similarities, maybe, as the chapters are often connected with one language or two languages. So maybe there is some correlation between the growth of the Wikipedias and the growth of the chapters. So if Wikipedia is big enough, it gets a chapter. Surprisingly, if we remember things, uh, many Wikipedias were, uh, many chapters were established somewhere when their language hit 50,000 or 100,000 articles. However, the next year, uh, learning is that there are many language of Wikipedias with more than 100,000 articles which still don't have a chapter. So there are many chapter possibilities. Actually it is, because um, this red line can be confusing because there are some languages like English, German, well, uh, and Spanish where we have many chapters for one language. Therefore there are many languages which hit this 100,000 articles and they still don't have a chapter. Take a look at uh, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, especially Asia is a, is a big area over here. But we have other countries where, where, where we are still lacking. So if we have some WCA or we, if we have some affiliation committee, maybe this is something to take a look where we should search actively to create a chapter, and to reach out to the people and ask them if they need some help in creating a local structure. Because we can tell that this is just a cultural thing, but maybe it is not. Maybe they need some help. Maybe they would love to have their local structure, but we need to help them with establishing it. A second thing, just to remind, just to remind people of us of some tiny facts. This is the comparison of a couple of chapters in terms of financial data. 
these are the, the green is income, the red is outcome, animal, in US dollars, to compare, to compare the sizes. Wikimedia Deutschland is the biggest one. Wikimedia France has unfortunately data from 2011 to 2012. The big collapse happened. And we don't have the, I don't have the full financial statement, but uh, certainly the, uh, these numbers will be far smaller. And then we have Wikimedia UK, which is data is missing for 2012, really. Uh, Switzerland, Netherlands, Poland, and uh, STS, Estland. So basically, Wikimedia Deutschland, which is the biggest chapter, and comparing to Wikimedia Poland, which is considered as a medium-sized chapter, has something like 100 times of revenues, annual revenues, of Wikimedia Poland. This is the kind of disproportion and differences among the chapters. The small chapter has something like 1,000th or not even 1,000th portion of revenues of the big chapter. And I'm not even putting there a Wikimedia Foundation because it would be completely out of the screen. So basically, it is, it is a reminder that we are talking about such huge disproportions between chapters. It is not five times more, it is not 10 times more, it is not 20 times more. So when the big and major organizations come out to these people having, the, I don't know, only the pocket money, the pocket money they raise, and only a small amount of free time, to uh, the attitude of those people and the resources to actually kind of pull from this auditing thing to, to run some programs is completely different. They don't have any resources to run Wikimedia Chapters Association. They don't have any resources to run auditing. And we don't know if they have resources to grow. This is very, this is a very scary question. If they have resources to grow or if they have only the resources to stand on the same level. Actually, my, 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 my big fear is that in terms of Wikimedia chapters involvement, we will see the same slump that we see in, term, in terms of Wikipedia edition. And I think it's already, it's already occurring. It was so far from it. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. So what's the, the cost of these huge gaps or differences in the budgets? Cost? Or cost? The cost. Because, oh, many things. I know from the size of the country uh, to the uh, GDP and uh, income per capita in particular countries to um, the structure and structural reasons, the difference in the development. We have developed countries and not so developed countries, which are from nowadays called global south. Um, many things, cultural things, maybe, um, and I think that this is the, this is the, then the actually task for qualitative people to come there and see what is the reason and can we do something with it or not? Because it's a, if it's a vast cultural reason or economic reason, that we cannot do much about that. If it's something different, something maybe political, um, maybe we can work around that. Maybe we can help them to create a char chapter, or organization. Yeah, but I mean, France and Germany are in certain ways comparable in size. Uh, even then, France is pretty smaller than Germany. Yes, and if we took the, uh, the data for 2012, they would be even smaller. I don't know. And maybe this is a very good question. What Wikimedia Deutschland does so well, what they do so well, because they do something very, very well that they are here. Uh, you are not bigger just than Wikimedia France. You are bigger than anyone else. Because when you took a look at Wikimedia Switzerland, Wikimedia Netherlands, Wikimedia France, so they are more or less in the same shape. The France is much bigger than Switzerland, but, uh, and it's somewhat bigger when it, when it was healthy, but they are in the same league. And now Wikimedia Deutschland is completely out of the proportion. And maybe this is the topic for the presentation of Wikimedia Deutschland for me. Hi. Um, actually, a big uh, proportion of that income is uh, related to Wikidata. So we got extra money funding, only funding for Wikidata. Uh, and that's the reason why there's such a big So, so 
So it's basically now to having ideas on getting the ground from the foundation to do those. Yeah, so selling your services. This is the answer. Becoming the center of costs for Wikimedia Foundation. Selling your services inside of the Wikimedia movement. Hmm? Wikidata is not supported by the foundation. So that's so not, the, that's not the answer to that question. Just to let you know. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I, I see we react all the time, but I, I wonder kind of well, how much we can learn from the numbers. Uh, what we couldn't, or I say the other way, what you, your questions now, they are qualitative questions for well, qualitative mm -hmm. um, research. I wonder how much one can learn from this for that, because get this some numbers, if there is one, one thing in terms expenses, but, but maybe there are other things, uh, quantitative, that can explain this, uh, this difference. I think you can make that notion, it's pretty normal. I think if you look at the French, <laughs> the, British, the, the British had the, the second uh, media association, that's uh -huh. where we start, so uh, they're much younger than the German chapter, for example. Uh -huh. uh, well, I work in num with numbers. Uh, professionally, so when, when and, <laughs> and, okay. and uh, the thing is that you always take it, uh, when you're doing uh, scientific research, you're often like market research, you're doing something like a qualitative research, and then you have quantitative, quantitative research only to prove what you found before. Unfortunately, in organizations, this is completely opposite. You have numbers, you have benchmarks, you have thresholds, and then when you see some red light or green light, then you go there and you start asking questions. So quantitative research is something like a big console with those blinking lights and they're blinking red and green and you, and you are sitting on the controller's place and you, and you see that. And if something blinks incorrectly or when you see a funny graph, then you need to go there and ask what's going on. This is in this way and not vice versa. Uh, the, the number <coughs> is never the, the last answer. The qualitative is always the last, uh, last answer, but the numbers tell you where you should look at. And this is always like that. And when you should, uh, see these numbers, you see the number of Vietnamese people, then Vietnamese contributors and Vietnamese uh, articles on Wikipedia, then you start asking why don't we have something in Vietnam? Unfortunately, yes, it's not.